What's going on guys, Jeff Holiday here, and I am unfortunately still sick uh, since the last time I made a video, it actually turned into an ear infection. So as much as I want to do more of the high production projects that I am currently embroiled in, um, I still have to kind of take it a little easy. But I came across this article, and I had heard about it before, and honestly, these are the types of things that I really, really need to be talking about. It's something that I feel doesn't get enough attention and me with the platform i have the ability to to bring more people's understanding of these very dangerous problems and situations so this is going to be a very fun video uh but it is important because it it involves life or death situations so uh i am i'm forcing myself uh even with my half my head throbbing in pain right now we're we're, we're gonna look at this article and I'm going to show you uh, just how weird and deep this actually goes. So this article comes from The Star, and this is a story coming out of Canada. This was reported on May 15th. I looked to see if there was anything new that had been developing since then, but unfortunately, no. Supreme Court orders new trial for parents of boy dead of meningitis. Ottawa. The Supreme Court of Canada has ordered a new trial for a couple who used homemade remedies instead of seeking medical attention for their son who died of bacterial meningitis. David Steffen and his wife Colette were found guilty in 2016 of failing to provide the necessities of life to 19-month-old Ezekiel in 2012. Uh, I had heard about this quite a, quite a couple of years ago, uh, I think when they were first found guilty, but it got a little bit more complicated. There's a video here, and, and we're, we're going to take a look at it in a second. It's, it's pretty wild. Their trial in Lethbridge, Alta... I'm not really sure what that is, heard that they treated the boy with garlic, onion, and horseradish rather than take him to a doctor. The Steffens eventually called 911, but the toddler died in hospital. The Supreme Court heard arguments from the couple's lawyer and the Crown on Tuesday morning before making the unusual move of ruling immediately from the bench. Karen Molly, lawyer for the Steffens, told the High Court the original trial judge didn't instruct the jury properly to determine whether the Steffens acted differently than other reasonable parents. So to, to kind of break this down a little bit, they got dragged into court because their son died. Um, and there is a bit of an argument going on that maybe the judge didn't word it properly when extracting the jury that to find them guilty, you need to find that what they did would be vastly different than what other reasonable parents would do. Well, call me crazy, uh, but treating viral meningitis uh, with garlic, onion, and horseradish that's um, yeah, that's not what a regular parent would do. This jury charge gave this jury little choice but to convict, Molly said. And there is, uh, there's the two wonderful parents of the year right there. Julie Morgan representing the Crown said so the trial judge's language was generalized, but it was enough for the jury to understand the case. The jury would have understood what their job was, she told the court. They found that the appellants did not meet the community standard when they failed to take their child to a doctor when he had meningitis and that endangered his life. David Steffen was sentenced to four months in jail and his wife was ordered to spend three months under house arrest, the only exceptions being for trips to church and medical appointments. It gets worse. Hang on. The Alberta Court of Appeal upheld the conviction last November, but because the ruling wasn't unanimous, the couple had an automatic right to take their court to their case to the Supreme Court. Justice Michael Moldover, speaking for the High Court Tuesday, said the trial judge did not properly instruct jurors in a way that the jury could understand. Accordingly, we would allow the appeal, quash the convictions, and order a new trial. David Steffen said outside the court, he and his wife feel vindicated. So, <laughs> this is so frustrating. Uh, you feel vindicated. You you killed your kid. You let your kid die by using your spooky magic beliefs, um, which have no reason that it would actually save your child. Your child died, and it's your fault. And you feel vindicated that you have to have a retrial. Well, I'm sorry, but four months in jail for what I would consider negligent homicide of a of a toddler? No. No, that's that's not fair. I, I think this piece of shit and his wife should be in jail for a while. Set a goddamn example. This is hideous. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you in a minute exactly why this is so nefarious and so fucked up. 
We're grateful because it's a move in the right direction and we now have the opportunity to bring the whole truth forward, he said. We're just so excited to have the ability to do that and to be able to, be able to uphold parental rights here in Canada. Oh, he's a freedom fighter. That's what it is. He's, he's fighting for, for parents' freedom. All right. Uh, Stefan posted on Facebook last week that the Supreme Court hearing was important for parents in all of Canada. Our Supreme Court hearing will not only affect the future of our family, but the future of all Canadians as this landmark precedent-setting case is being used to deprive parental rights and health freedoms in Canada, he wrote. His post also made the reference to the real criminals, but he wouldn't elaborate on what he meant Tuesday. We'll have to wait and find out, won't we? Now, this is, uh, I, I want you to hear him say this, too. Yeah, this is this is what this this video is right here. Listen to this shit. This is fucked. We feel very vindicated. We're extremely grateful. We're grateful because this is a move in the right direction, and we now have the opportunity to bring the whole truth forward. And we're just so excited to um, to have the, the the ability to do that. The whole truth forward. That that. Uh, we we mistreated our child, uh, did not seek medical attention, and he died. Fantastic. And to be able to uphold parental rights here in Canada. And, and you said on your Facebook post that uh, you hope that a new trial, there will be the real criminals exposed. Who are the real criminals in your eyes? We'll have to wait and, uh, and find out, won't we? Thank you very much. Let's, big smiles, big smiles. Okay. Big, big fucking smiles. This piece of shit. I swear to God. I, I'm... I really... It frustrates me because I, I'm in such a condition that I can't be as eloquent as I want to be. But the thing that I think we really have to... We really have to focus on this is, one, who this person is, and two, what they're saying right now. Because they're talking about depriving parental rights... He's saying that there needs to be parental rights in which parents are allowed to use whatever batshit insane treatment, even if it kills their fucking kids, uh, and the state shouldn't get involved. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm mind blown by this, but effectively that means that he is, he's willing to chalk up his child's death as a sacrifice on the altar of pseudoscience. And it really comes down to my freedoms, my freedoms. Why would this guy be so willing to do that? Don't worry, it's coming. Witnesses at the trial said the toddler's body was so stiff he couldn't sit in his car seat. So he had to lie in a mattress when his mother drove him from their rural Alberta home to a naturopathic clinic in Lethbridge where she bought an echinacea mixture. The Stephens never called for medical assistance until Ezekiel stopped breathing. He was taken to a local hospital and died after being transported to Calgary's Children's Hospital. This little boy, his body was so stiff he couldn't sit. Locked in place. And rather than take him to a doctor, they put a mattress down in their car and drove him to a naturopathic clinic to buy echinacea. You pissed off yet? Because I sure as fuck am. So let's learn a little bit more about uh, David Steffen here. This is back in February of this year. Wellness Expo dropped speaker convicted in son's 2012 death from lineup after losing sponsors. A national grocery chain said Sunday that it's no longer a sponsor of a series of wellness expositions where a man convicted in the death of his toddler was listed as a featured speaker. Sobeys had sponsoring the Health and Wellness Expo of Canada, which on Sunday morning listed David Steffen as a speaker at events this month and next in Saskatoon, Winnipeg, Calgary, and Edmonton. There's that wonderful, wonderful piece of shit right there. Uh, in an email statement, the spokesperson said the company couldn't support the organizer's decision to host Steffen as a speaker. By Sunday afternoon, Steffen's name was removed from the Expo's website and links to the event schedules no longer worked. The Expo website previously said that Stefan works for a research-based organization, research-based, that offers nutrient supplementation in an effort to improve brain and thyroid function. The Essen said he had no knowledge of the Stefan's conviction until Saturday, when a post on the Expo company's Facebook page criticized his inclusion. Stefan, who now lives in Nelson, BC, took to Facebook on Sunday and posted a 25-minute video where he linked the online attacks to trolls. He said, we're supported by the pharmaceutical industry. Mm-hmm. He also said, facts about his son's death, including how it was caused, were falsely reported by the media during the trial. 
I don't know if it had anything to do with the fact the pharmaceutical industry is a major funder of the media because of advertising dollars, I don't know. The essence said Stefan was brought to his company last year by another vendor. He said he looked at the website for the nutritional supplements company called True Hope Nutritional Support, which Stefan's family helped start and was impressed. I didn't search their family history, why would I? I hired a company off the internet from their website. So Stefan's father, Anthony Stefan, co-founded True Hope Nutritional Support in Raymond in 1996 after his wife took her own life. The company's website said the woman and some of the couple's 10 children had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder. So Anthony Stefan formed the company with a friend to find a natural treatment. Interesting. So uh, this guy, his dad, uh, had a wife. Uh, she unfortunately took her own life because she was bipolar. And they were worried that some of their other children were bipolar as well, which could include David Stefan. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but he started a supplement company of which I believe, if I'm not mistaken, is how David Stefan even got involved in wellness expos to begin with. Now, <clears throat> let's, uh, let's look a little bit deeper about this. So we've got over here. Uh, True Hope, uh, True Hope uh, Nutritional Support, I think is what it's called. And uh, they sell lots and lots and lots of fucking products, especially one called EM, what is it called? It's it's called EM Power Plus. Okay, this is this is their, their big, their big one. Uh, EM Power Plus, multivitamin supplements, uh, higher levels of the key nutrients you need to function at your best. And uh, highest potency, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what's crazy about this, though, is at times this has been lauded, apparently, as something of a bipolar medication. Mm -hmm. Even though it's a supplement, it's not a medicine. It is not regulated at all. Now, over here in my digging, I found this website uh, from NatashaTracy.com. What I don't know about EM Power Plus by True Hope that you don't, or what I do know about EM Power Plus by True Hope that you don't. Now, what's interesting is she ordered some of this uh, EM Power Plus, and after ordering it, they called her. They called her and were asking about her diagnosis, and she felt a little uncomfortable, but said bipolar, uh, and then they wanted to ask what kind of medications uh, she was on because they claimed that there was possibly dangerous interactions between uh, EM Power Plus and her medications. And when she asked what qualifications the support staff had, uh, the person replied, well, they're educated on the product rather than, well, these people hold this type of degree or this type of experience, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's this person's belief now I, I can't I can't verify it or not that their their whole point of this is to build up a profile on their customers of what kind of medications they're on so they can try and sell them more nutrients more more supplements right a little sketchy but at the same time technically not criminal but it is very common for a uh, nutritional company so what it really comes down to is this you have two people who have been indoctrinated into the cult of uh, holistic alternative uh, supplement therapy uh, they have a very very big vested financial interest in doing this because of their ties to a supplement company that was started by one of their fathers they then have a child who gets dangerously dangerously sick and they try to make a point that they can heal him without having to engage in, in the pharmaceutical industry or the medical industrial complex or whatever the fuck these people are saying these days. Uh, and this, this, uh, this little boy died in agony, in fucking agony. His body so stiff he couldn't sit down while his mom takes him to an alternative health store to buy echinacea. Now, they're being retried in the Supreme Court, and I, I, I firmly believe that they're, they're going to get convicted. And if they don't, then that is a fucking problem, because that will set a very dangerous precedent. Uh, but on top of that, it is disgusting that he would only get four months in prison for the negligent homicide of his child. The agony that that little boy went through, needlessly, because he was a sacrifice on the altar of pseudoscience. It's disgusting. And in the meantime, prayers for Ezekiel, uh, their Facebook page, where they, they try and rally up every wingnut, quack, Looney Tunes person who's been drinking the Kool-Aid to give them support. 
very active there as well they've got uh over here stand for truth and uh, i wonder wonder why, why they would make a website called stand for truth oh that that's right that's right um probably because of uh let me show you this right here yeah because of that Look, viral meningitis is, is a, a not screwing around problem. If your kid shows signs of meningitis, you need to take them to the doctor right away. Right away. That is absolute insanity that anyone would just not. Just not. Uh, these people are disgusting. I find them inhuman. Uh, and I, I hope I hope that not only when they are retried, they are, they are found guilty and they are given a much, much more severe punishment because... This is fucked, and there needs to be a message sent that children are, are more important than your Looney Tunes beliefs, so maybe you can hawk some fucking vitamins to people. Just saying. Anyway, uh, that's, that's gonna be it for me today. I'm gonna go back to laying down and hoping this ear infection finally clears up. I am on some good antibiotics, um, so cross your fingers for me. But otherwise, I hope everybody out there is well. I'll see you next time. For my family years, take care. Bye-bye.